If you mix up the bolts, you may risk uh, damaging the cylinder head because uh, you will try to tighten down the bolts into the wrong hole and uh, you know how well that goes. I've cleaned all the surfaces so they are free of oil. Don't forget to insert these spark plug uh, cylinders back into their position. Make sure that they lay flat on the cylinder head so that everything is nice and tight. Don't forget the other one. So we have two of them that we have to put back. Now what I did is uh, I've secured my gasket with the zip ties. So as you can see, this is uh, how I plan to keep the gasket in place while I put back the cover. And I've also put a little bit of uh, silicone on the edges. So uh, you have to put some silicone here where the most uh, severe edges are. So all around here and also here at the back. So you have to put some silicone here, here and here. This is very common place where the oil starts leaking after a while. So make sure that you do use a little bit of this RTV. So uh, this is now ready to be put back on the engine. After you've put back the cover, make sure that uh, this part here and here is nicely aligned with the cylinder head. If it's not, you will get a leak here and uh, you will have plenty of issues and you will have to redo this part of the job. So make sure you do it correctly the first time. Okay, here we go. Make sure that nothing is in the way. Now you can push it in slowly. And now I'm going to use my fingers to feel if the back part of the gasket is aligned correctly. And from what I can feel it is. So Time to remove the zip ties. Now it's time to put back the bolts. As you can see, we have different lengths of bolts. So before you put back uh, all the bolts, make sure that you measure them and you put them in correct position. This particular car had the bolts uh, mixed up, so it's a good thing I checked. So we have... Uh, a couple of shorter bolts. These are uh, 43 millimeters, something like that. And then you have your longer bolts. They are about uh, 55 millimeters. And then the rest of the bolts are shorter. So uh, make sure that you don't mix them up. So here you can see that we have different lengths. If you mix up the bolts, you may risk uh, damaging the cylinder head because uh, you will try to tighten down the bolts into the wrong hole and uh, you know how well that goes. So uh, you might even have oil leak because the bolts don't press all the way down to the uh, appropriate uh, distance. So this is very common issue on these engines. So first, the shortest bolts go here at the top.
and uh, the longest bolts go here. And the rest of the bolts have all the same length, so we're going to put them all around the edges of the cover. There is one exception, however, of course, this is the bolt that goes to the back and that holds the bracket for the vacuum line. Start at the top center bolts, just uh, make them hand tight. Go from center towards the edges of the valve cover. This way the valve cover fits nicely and it is not uh, under some weird stress or something like that. Now we torque the bolts to 10 newton meters. Now we put back this uh, gasket flange for the Valvetronic sensor connector. I'm going to tighten down these bolts by hand because I can't find the torque spec for this. So I don't want to over tighten it and ruin the thread. I would say they have to be about eight or seven Newton meters. Replace this gasket if it's uh, brittle or old or maybe still original because this is a common source for uh, vacuum leaks. Now I'm going to torque down the spark plugs to 30 newton meters. Now I'm going to put back this little nut that holds the vacuum line bracket at the back. I've put a little bit of grease on the bolts. This way they can't uh, be dropped into the engine bay when I'm trying to put them back to their place. So as you can see, this is a very good trick to use. Make sure that the grounding wires are uh, aligned and then you can just tighten down the terminal. First hand tight. Now we have to torque them down to 10 Newton meters. Now it's time to put back the coils. Make sure you put them in their original location. As you remember, we did uh, mark them from one to four, so it is easy to do that. Make sure that they are all the way in and then connect the connectors and make sure that everything fits nicely. Now we can put back the Valvetronic connectors 
So this is the Valvetronic motor connector. And this is the Valvetronic sensor connector. But before I do that, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, brake clean and clean out the connection because I can see there's a little bit of oil in there. And of course, don't forget to reconnect the exhaust uh, vanos sensor. And then we reconnect this air hose. Then we put back this cover for the heater unit. Make sure that all the hoses and uh, connectors are nicely aligned. Make sure that all the gaskets are where they should be. And then you can just slide in the cover. There are a couple of tabs here and there that position the cover in place. Okay, now we can put back the T30 bolts. Don't forget to put back this uh, plastic fastener. So you insert it horizontally and then you turn it 90 degrees and it should lock in place. Then we can put back the coil cover, but before we do that, we have to put back this little bit of uh, plastic here at the back. And then we have to remove the oil cap again. Again, match the arrows here. This is the position where you can remove the oil cap. And now we have to find the right position where this cover fits on the cylinder head. And then we put back the oil cap. Next step would be to put back uh, the cover here, but sadly this car uh, came without this cover. It is lost somewhere. So when you are putting it back, just make sure that you engage the cover with uh, a hole here and uh, here at the back with the pins so that the back of the cover is nicely aligned. Otherwise, this cover will be rubbing against the air filter or cabin filter housing and you will have noise and uh, fine plastic dust all around this area. So uh, make sure you avoid that when you're putting it back. Next is the housing for the filter. Again, make sure that all the seals are nicely aligned. Then we put back the four bolts, make them hand tight. Don't go crazy on those bolts. Then we can put in the air filter and the filter cover. Don't forget to put back this uh, cable holder. Okay, I've got everything back together. Now it's time to reconnect the battery and start the engine and see if everything works okay.
I've let the engine run for a good 10-15 minutes so it got up to temperature and then I gave it some revs and I've waited for the oil to evaporate so I don't have any smoke left and everything seems to be working fine so now it's time to put back this front uh, duct or cover so you have a notch here and you just have to slide it on the intake and make sure that this notch here engages with this uh, tank for the washing fluid and now we just have to put back the two rivets at the front okay the car is almost finished now the last thing i have to put back is this splash cover that goes underneath the engine bay i'm back at my laptop and i have the car connected via cable and i am viewing again analog value 4 on impa and i can see that crankshaft adaptation inlet bank 1 is now at uh, 114 degrees which i think is within spec and also our outlet bank or um, outlet adaptation is uh, 54 degrees. So this is uh, almost 60. So right in the middle, I think that this is also within spec. So I think that we can now confirm that this engine is fixed. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you have N42 or N46 engine and keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.